So thank you very much for having me. Um, I wanted to say tonight, but uh, at least here in Munich, it's 8 p.m. So I guess it's uh, Sunday lunchtime in, in New York. Um, so my name is Dominik Koczkowski. I live in Munich, but my family comes from Krakow. In normal times, I'm quite often there, but uh, now I'm still waiting to get uh, vaccinated. Um, I work as an architect for a small company, but I also have my own project called Ochko Stereo to develop stereoscopic equipment. And I really love photography too. I have big interest in the haptic mediums of photography and the optics generated images. So I've launched um, my first project open to the public eye on Kickstarter last month with uh, Minuta Stereo, a stereoscopic pinhole camera. I could find over 150 people that invested nearly 30,000 euros into analog stereoscopy. Um, in exchange, they will get my first product a stereo pinhole camera together with a viewer, an exposure calculator, and some stereo slide mounts. I really want to thank again all backers for making this campaign success a successful one. These people trusted me enough to deliver the product, so I will work hard not to disappoint them. But the crowd also gave me a first proof of concept that there seems to be a need for stereoscopic gear these days. I've generated some interest not only among stereographers but also made 2d photographers curious about stereo 3d today i will show you only a few images of the funded camera just to give a short summary to those who haven't seen it yet minuta stereo is a multi-format stereo pinhole camera the parts are laser cut out of mdf a wooden composite material you can load medium format and 35 millimeter film. The pinholes are drilled under a microscope and are off-centered. This means, means that depending on how you load the film, the camera may be looking upwards or downwards while still being perfectly horizontal. This will generate eight potential image formats. But maybe the biggest difference to other pinhole cameras, except of being stereoscopic, of course, are the provided viewfinders. I've developed a quite precise way of aiming so that you can compose your frame before exposure. But instead of talking more about the design of the camera, today I want to show you how the project is evolving. Actually, I already started developing stereoscopes some years ago. This old mirror stereoscope mixed up with two iPads gave me the deepest 3D vision I've ever experienced. So originally, I wanted to focus on a new mirror stereoscope for exhibition spaces. But now it will have to wait a little longer because somehow a stereo pinhole came in between. After constructing several devices, I found that my preferred construction method, which is laser cut MDF. It gives me the necessary precision while still being affordable. Although 3D Printers are getting cheaper and cheaper. Unfortunately, laser cutters are still expensive. Until now, I gave my MDF sheets to a laser service, service provider. The cutout pieces for each of the prototypes would come about two weeks later by mail. I had problems with the delay and huge costs related to this method. The rich goal of my crowdfunding campaign was to raise funds of, for my own laser cutting machine. Thanks to the fantastic support of the community, it seems that my dream will become reality very soon. So for those of you who don't know what a laser cutter is, I will exp explain briefly. This machine can engrave or cut through sheet materials such as wood, leather, cardboard, or even acrylic up to about one centimeter. The laser, the laser beam it is produced in a glass tube at the back of the machine. It is then redirected by a mirror that can be moved on the X and Y axis before it hits the material. You need to find the correct focus by lifting or lowering the material. The machine comes with an industrial water chiller for the laser tube. There is also an air compressor and a unit with multiple filters removing any soot particles from the exhaust. 
This allows indoor use. There will also be a separate computer just for controlling the laser. Meanwhile, I found a nice setup made in the UK that was used for demonstrations in a showroom. The machine will come soon by a small truck to Munich. Rents in Munich are quite high, so I was very lucky to find a nice atelier earlier this year. I'm renting a small space in Munich's Kreativquartier. It is an interesting area with lots of artists and makers. My room is part of a container village only existing for the next five years. But it is perfectly suitable for a small workshop. This is a drawing of my space. It will be a quite cozy workshop, but it is sufficient for the beginning. I want to divide the room with a small wall to get my working table separated from the loud machines. You can see the laser in the corner. Next to the entrance, there will be the, a table for assembling the cameras. If there is not a lot of storage room for materials and ready-built items, I might need to expand one day. My container is on the first floor, so I still need to figure out how to get the machine with over 300 kilograms lifted. Guys carrying it need, need to be insured, the same as the machine itself. Alternatively, a small crane could come. The width of the entrance door could become a problem too, but there's a possibility of disassembling the big unit. While setting up the production, I really want to invest into efficiency and well thought workflows. I'm completely new to this field, but I'm really inspired by the lean manufacturing and design thinking ideas. I also will try to generate less waste and use my green electricity reasonable. The image you see is the Frankfurter Küche, a kitchen designed in the 20s to optimize motion sequences. But I also want to optimize my design process. So with the additional funds I could raise, I hired a, design, a product design working student. I think he will learn a lot with this project, but I'll also I will learn a lot from him. He is showing me how to set up a virtual model of the camera in, in a 3D software. As architects normally do, until now I envisioned all my designs in two-dimensional drawings using a CAD software. When it comes to design a camera, this is not the easiest way to do. So setting up things in 3D will help saving time. During the campaign, I already received some very cool feedback on how to improve the camera. For example, my convergence shift was too big. Also, the magnetic parts need to be aligned in a different way. The clicker will be located in the center of the, air, of the camera. There are also some issues with, with the film not being flat. Unlike a monoscopic pinhole camera, this can cause major errors in stereo pairs. So there need to be film rails that unfortunately will cover some of the sprocket hole area or some kind of film tensioner. The same way I'm working on improvements for the Emulsia viewer. I talked to a very nice guy from Canada who is producing medium format 3D stereo slide mounts. There are only few makers in the field of stereoscopy, so I don't like the idea of being in competition with any of them. So I thought about buying mounts from him, but after some brief calculations, I realized that my laser will be able to produce much faster and cheaper. So soon there will be Osco Stereo mounts available in different formats. I still need to find a good archival acid-free material for them. On this image, you can see the formats for, Minuta, for the Minuta pinhole camera, but, I, but if you have wishes for special formats, please tell me. Actually, I think about removing the orientation marks you see here. And yes, I'm aware of the low magnification of the small 35 millimeter square with the medium format stereoscope. A special viewer for the smaller formats will come. I think that my approach to the design of optical devices is still the one of an architect. In the elements of Minuta Stereo, I see the bases, the walls, and the roof of the two light chambers. There are also two holes projecting a reversed image of the outside world into the opposite wall. The camera needs to control the entering light. Only where light hits the film, it will transform the fragile emulsion to record a unique moment of time. I am used to see my visions evolving slowly. Some projects even take decades from the first sketch to the completed building. 
Designing in a much smaller scale let my drawings become reality much faster. It is really fun to design optical apparatuses and to work on this beautiful technique called stereoscopy. I am very grateful to my supporters that they gave me the chance to keep on going. So as soon as I have my own production set up, I can develop prototypes much faster and hopefully get more stereo hardware available. I have several products in mind that should be doable. Stereoscopes, cameras, and gadgets, analog and digital, including sets to combine available professional cameras. But for now, I will focus on delivering my first, first product. Logistics need to be planned. Customs are quite a difficult topic for me when shipping overseas. But there are also some strange issues that I never thought to become a problem. For example, I still cannot find empty medium format spools. If anyone knows where I can get them, please give me a hint. I've also started thinking about the packaging. I want the boxes to be as small as possible. A friend of mine has a screen printing workshop, so we made the first test. It is an interesting technique that is quite new for me. In German, this is called Siebdruck, so sieve printing. Here you see our first sieve or screen. The paint is applied with the squeegee. You can see that we've made also a test for photon, the exposure calculator. The material for this one is not fixed yet, so we wanted to test screen printing on laser MDF. On the left, you see laser engraved MDF. The others are direct printed cardboard cut it by a cutting plotter. I am planning a custom photon for various pinhole cameras with different f-stops. So I still need to figure out how to set up an optimized calculation of the values. On the right, you can also see a planned distance calculator for stereoscopic near and far points. What I will learn from the test with the exposure calculator will be also applied to Papuga, a cardboard stereoscope for smartphones and stereo cards. So I'm extremely happy that there are enough people wanting me to continue with my plan. How much I will work these days as an architect remains to be seen. Beside my work, I also want to be there for my kid and I want to support my wife following her own ambitious plan in the container next to mine. Crucial to it all is that I've decided to enjoy. So if you are curious about how everything evolves, please subscribe to my newsletter on my website. Please also don't hesitate to contact me. Let me know what you want me to do and how I can do better. I'm always happy to learn from anyone's experience. So first I will focus on sending out all rewards and making my initial crowd happy. Then we will see what will happen next. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dominic. Uh, I'm seeing a thumbs up and um, let me just take a quick look. Now, first of all, anyone who wants to come off mute and ask a question, feel free to do so. I will just take a moment and scan through the chat to see if there are any questions. If you prefer to put your question in chat rather than speak, you can do that and I'll just read your question out loud. Uh, Dominic, uh, you said you were you're looking for something. I didn't quite hear what you said you were looking for. Uh, I'm looking for medium format film spools. Uh, film spools. Empty ones. And I don't know ah. where I can get them. Um, I'll look at that. <laughs> David, I, I cannot hear you. You're... Yep, you're still mute, David. You're still on. You're still on mute, David. <laughs> Maybe try to type it in. in here. Maybe we could read your lips. Any other questions while David's doing that? Okay, I see somebody typed in that they're a backer. Raise your hand if you back the project. <laughs> Thanks a lot. That's great. That's great. Okay, you know, but I, I'm upset that I didn't 
I didn't get two cameras because I actually want one for my collection and I don't want to use it. And then I want one to use. So hopefully they'll be for sale at some point later. That's not a problem. Um, I, I'm, I'm planning to set up a, uh, um, a pre-order uh, website, but uh, I think there are more important things to do now. <laughs> oh, OK. Oh, oh. Yeah, I finally got unmuted, but <laughs> sorry. Um, all I was saying is, for, for those who might not realize it, so one tw medium format, I assume he's meaning a, a 120 roll film spool. Yes, I am. Yeah. I'll, I'll look into that. I don't know if we have a source in the USA. Uh, otherwise, it would probably be on eBay. <laughs> Yes, you can buy like 10 of them for a lot of money, uh, but I need some more. And um, I guess the big companies producing film, they are producing them themselves. And I don't know, maybe I also need to do them myself, but I hope no. I you don't want to make your own film spools. I, I would hope that Kodak or Fuji or whatever would be willing to sell empty spools. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Have you tried uh, a photo processing lab uh, to see if they're, they're willing to give you the ones that they are otherwise going to discard? Yeah, it's a good idea. That's a good idea, yes. That's, that's, a, that's a point. It's true. I would do that. So um, if, if there are no questions. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I do have a question about uh, the mounts that you were showing. You said you, you hadn't decided on a uh, uh, what material you're going to make them out of yet. Are, are you considering like a plastic material or? Um, I think rather it will be cardboard. But the uh, problem with cardboard is that when you bend it, it uh, tends to um, tends to break and then you have small pieces falling out and this will cause dust. And um, I'm looking for a cardboard that will not produce any dust when, when it gets banded. Mm. So maybe okay. some, some kind of coated cardboard. <clears throat> I like that diagram of the way of focusing uh, that analog with no lenses. Uh, it's a great diagram. That's very. Did you discover that as you were working on it, or? Um, you mean the diagram with the eight formats? The framing, right? Um, Your composition frame. Right. The, yes. Yes. So. The viewfinder, you mean? Yes. Yes. The yes, yes, yes. The viewfinder. Yes. I, I was looking for a, a way to determine the distance of your eye. To the to the to the frame. So when you know where to place your eye, you will have the perfect angle of, of view. This will give you the the a price, quite precise uh, viewfinder. It reminded me of a scene in a movie called The Dam Busters. It's a nineteen forties film about uh, English uh, blowing up uh, Nazi uh, um, dams, and they had to. They had to do something similar in the cockpits of the planes. OK. I haven't seen that one, but it sounds interesting. It's, it's yeah. self-defining. Self OK. <laughs> they, were, they were bouncing the mines, the, bouncing them off the water onto the, into the dam. Anyway, it's an interesting movie. <laughs> yes, 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 I guess. So um, I guess um, there are stereo lovers today in the audience. So it, maybe it is interesting for you to know that <clears throat> that I could um, generate some interest not only within you but also to find some new people interested in in this technique. So maybe this is this is a thing that. It is interesting that 2021, there's interest in analog 3D photography. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, thank you so much, Dominic. This has been this has been great. Um, there are more comments in the chat, um, so I will. I'm going to hand things over to Pascal. Um, but there are additional comments in the chat on where you can find some things. People have some suggestions, so um, take take a look through there. Okay. And um, and then if we have time at the end, we can also take more questions um, if you guys think of some additional things. And uh, yeah, uh, so we hope to have you back uh, at a future uh, meeting, Dominic, just to keep us up to date on what's happening. For sure. I, I want to know how you got that equipment up to the to the second floor. 